Do you remember when you were a child and you learned the first fundamentals of rubber bands? What I mean by that is you learned to take that rubber band and you learned to shoot them across the room and, and you learned the different sizes of rubber bands and, and you learned just how to sling them across the room. I don't know who's gonna pick those up. We didn't think about that at the time, but we learned about bigger rubber bands and smaller rubber bands and, and we found ways to grow. Now it might not have been what people wanted us to grow in, but we found ways to do things we had always wanted to do. I'm Jonathan Burns. Thank you so much for joining me on Walking with the Word. Today we're looking at something that I hope you find interesting and hopefully will help you and me. How can we grow? You know, we remember taking those rubber bands and learning all that we had to do to maneuver our hands to, to sling those things across the room. And I'll be honest with you, I had a little fun today looking for rubber bands. And I shot a few down the hall as I was here today, just having fun at something we used to do as kids. But now that we're grown, we've got to grow. So how do we do that? Three major areas we're going to look at together, growing individually, growing together, and then growth barriers to help us understand how we can be people to grow. Let's start off first by looking at the ways that we can grow individually. Let's notice Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into all things in him who is head, Christ. Now, Ephesians 4.15 on its own may not make a lot of sense, but it's about growth and, and learning that no longer it's about self, but it's about looking at Christ. When we think about growing individually, I want us to always remember Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into Him. You know, for you and I to speak the truth... For you and I to speak the truth in love, we've got to know it. We're laying a foundational principle today, speaking the truth in love. If we're going to speak the truth in love, we've got to be people who know the truth so that we can be people who focus on the truth. The same is true in 1 Peter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Do you see the principle today? From Ephesians to Peter. How we can be people who grow in love because we know the truth and we grow up into Him. We know what we're trying to mature to be. It's more like Christ. We have 1 Peter. We're going to lay aside all the ways of the world and we're going to seek after that which we as babes in Christ can begin to grow with. But that means I've got to keep growing. You may be wondering, well, why in the world are you talking about growing as individuals? Because we'll never grow together if we can't grow as ourselves. So I want to challenge you on something that has to do with growth. Learn, develop, and focus your life on becoming more like Christ. Now let's talk about growing as individuals who are together. You see, growing together is a concept we need to pull over. And let's go back to Ephesians 4. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Certainly here, the body that's being described in Ephesians 4, and if you're not sure about that, go over to Ephesians 5, you'll learn more about that body. You have the church. The church needs to grow. Now, there's a couple of things we need to think about when it comes to church growth. We can think about numerical growth, and certainly numerical growth is important. We can think about knowledge-based growth and, and, and definitely, without missing anything, we need to be the most knowledgeable people about the Bible that have ever existed. We can think about spiritual growth. In other words, when I'm not around everybody, I have myself under control. I, I think when we start thinking about these distinct areas, and I know there are other areas in which we can grow. Maybe you're an elder in the church. Is there room for growth in your life? 
Maybe you're a deacon in the church. Is there room for growth in your life? Maybe you're a preacher. Can preachers grow? Certainly, I think they should and can. Whatever you may be, maybe you are a new babe in Christ. You're a new Christian. Can you grow? Maybe you've been a Christian for 50, 60, 70 years. Is there room for growth? I think we understand that together. There is always room for growth. But here in the book of Ephesians, as he's talking about the body, we may grow together when we do what? When we work together. How do we grow? We press forward. Now, as we looked a moment ago in Ephesians and Peter, let's think about 2 Peter. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with every error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. How can we grow? Let me give you something that's true. We can grow together when we quit looking at ourselves. The same is true about individuals. When we stop looking at ourselves, you see, we live in a me, my, I world. And that's the greatest problem that's ever existed. This world is not about me. It's not about you. But when we can take principles that Christ has, when we can emulate the first century church, we can begin to grow. To Him be glory. Not to you and I. To Him be glory. There is where we see growing together. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think about some things that exist. We've seen growing individually, growing together. Let's see some growth barriers. Now there are all sorts of barriers in life, but growth spiritually, there are some we need to consider. In Matthew 6, 28 and 29, we read these words. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. I want you to look at that first line in Matthew 6, 28. So why do you worry about clothing? You know, probably every person who's watching this got up this morning or whatever morning it is for you and, and you put on some clothes. You contemplated, you considered what you were going to wear. Now that is not what Matthew 6.28 is talking about. Matthew 6.28 is talking about why do we consider ourselves with trying to proverbially keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the richness, keep up with what's modern and what's popular. Why are you so worried about something that's trivial? Oh, we fall into that trap so often. We fall into the trivial. Why do you worry about your clothing? Then he takes us off in this imaginary journey. Consider the lilies of the field, the flowers of the field, how they grow, they don't toil, they don't spin, yet they, <laughs> he uses Solomon here. Solomon was not such arrayed like one of these. Solomon was a man of wealth. A man of riches, a man of everything. And the flowers, the lilies of the field, they have it better than Solomon. Boy, when we consider that, it changes our mind, it changes our mood. Because we want to be like the lilies of the field of which God has arrayed in His glory. That's pretty important, isn't it? Why do you worry about your clothing? One of the greatest growth barriers to spiritual growth, to faith, to Christianity, to heaven, is this world. John writes it this way, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Ooh, if we could pull that off in our lives. I want to take you to another growth barrier. It's Galatians 6, 9, and 10. And let's not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. 
Now you tell me something and, and you tell me if it's true for you and, and I'll tell you it's true for me. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I know it's true for me. Have you ever been too busy? Too busy? I don't have time. I can't get that done today. Can you help me? I've got too much to do. I believe one of the greatest tragedies of modern living, boy, we think we're so slick and so smart, is time management. I'm not great at it all the time either, and I know you're not either. But sometimes we're too busy. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to be here. I've got to be there. Then you add all the things with our families that are going on, our wives, our children. Oh, we can be in great problem. Don't grow weary while doing good. Do you have time to do good? The truth is you do. You have all the time that you've ever needed. For in due season we will reap if we'll faint not. Therefore, as we have opportunity, there's the key. As we have opportunity, let us do good, especially those who are of the household of faith. That last word there, faith, is a word that we're going to look at in our next episode of this program talking about do we need to go to church. But he says we don't need to weep or to faint, to really grow weak, but we have opportunity. I want to ask you this question. Do you, do I, do we, do we take the opportunities that are in front of us? You see, if we're trying to grow, we need to grow individually. Will you work on yourself? If we're going to grow, we need to grow together. Will we work together? And if we're going to grow, we need to recognize there are some barriers that can keep us from growing. So how do we grow? Let's answer the question. I believe it's simple for whether we're talking about individual growth or whether we're talking about growth together collectively. We will never grow if we do not care to. If you want to remain the same, you will. If you want to stay the same, you will. If you want to never change, you'll never change. But if you want to grow, you can. If you'll rely on Christ, if you'll focus on His Word, and you'll make the necessary changes. I'm glad that you've been with me today. I hope that you'll share this program with others, and I hope you'll meet me back next week right here on Walking with the Word as we strive to follow God's Word.